And I'd like to show you today a quick and easy way to quality control your rock trace inversions. I've just completed a rock trace inversion and what I'd like to do is cross plot high cut filtered logs versus the inversion outputs at the well locations. Previously this would have involved setting up special pseudo property types and doing the cross plotting manually but it can all be done more or less automatically now within our Faces and Fluid Probability, that's FFP, application. So I've just launched that here. I'm going to go into Input Session Setup, and I've just started a brand new empty session. I'm going to go and find those uh, inversion outputs, P impedance and VPVS. I will load them in. Um, I'm going to uh, want to access just the rest of our reservoir interval, so I'm going to uh, define or access a pre-made uh, solid model and I will pick the layers green and green lower which is my reservoir and uh, I'll need to define the trace gate which will be simply the whole volume and I've done that there and I will need to select the wells that I want to use and they're there and I'll put a high cut filter on those wells of 60 Hertz done. And in terms of the facies that I want to use, I'm going to select one that I've already made. Sand shale is a default one. And if you really don't care about facies, then uh, you can just leave that to the default. You may find a warning that they don't, facies don't exist in the wells, but that won't stop you from making uh, your cross plot. There it's uh, all set up and I'll just say, uh, say okay. I'll go into edit now edit QC PDFs and the default tab is the uncertainty analysis. It's uh, already set at P impedance for me and I just simply have to click on cross plot wells which I do and there automatically is in fact the cross plot that I uh, wanted uh, to make all done in one uh, quick push. I'll just uh, make these uh, data points a little larger and they may be harder to see in the uh, in this uh, video, so I'm just going to enlarge them a little bit, which I've done here. There they are. Now, uh, the next thing to do is to put a best fit line through these, and that can be easily done by selecting regressions, add regression fit, and there is my best fit line uh, uh, through the data points. That in our 10.0 release will be done automatically when this plot comes up. The best fit line will already be there. Uh, we're of course interested if it's a one-to-one -one line, which is uh, what we really want. Uh, and I can just edit this uh, uh, very quickly and make it a one-to-one -one line. And there that is. Sometimes uh, visually you might not prefer the automatic least square fitting and you might uh, prefer uh, something different. It's easy to edit it. In this case, I put on the one-to-one -one line and actually kind of like that better than the automatic fit. This is all color-coded by the faces I've chosen. If uh, you've taken defaults and not defined any faces of your own, all the little dots will be uh, one color. Well, that's that's kind of it. Uh, I've got P impedance here and I could have selected VPVS and uh, hit the cross plot again and I get my uh, uh, VPVS uh, cross plot. And uh, I'll just go ahead and make a regression here because it does show something interesting. And that is that this slope is 0.4, which is nowhere near one to one. Instantly you have uh, a calibration issue that you are aware of and can now go back to the inversion perhaps and, uh, and, uh, and fix uh, that issue up. Well, thanks very much for your attention. And uh, that's our quick tip for today.